So I think, first of all, I, I mean, I'm, I'm usually we're quite careful about using the word disrupt because at the end of the day, credit is all about inclusion. And so fundamentally, what we want to try to drive is as much more inclusion as possible. Um, when you look at the uh, credit penetration and the biggest hindrance, it's fundamentally around access of uh, data. Basically, how many people are coming in, affordability, certain things like that. Um, data and access, you know, when you want to build credit profiles, uh, it has a lot to do with, you know, everything from what are the original data sources, you know, when people want, where, how, how people are being underwritten, what are the core data sources that are being used. We are just starting a program today where um, uh, the NIN is just reaching, you know, sort of like 70, 80% or 50% capacity in terms of Nigerians that actually have their databases. So there's so much in terms of data available for verification. That, that to me is the first point of, uh, of, uh, of, of usage. The second point of usage is actually financial inclusion, right? So if a lot of people are financially included into the system, then there's transactional history that um, uh, you can base, you know, uh, your measurement of their financial performance on. Because if I've been out of a financial system and all you have on, all I've been doing in my life are cash transactions, then there's no real basis you have for me to, for you to be able to measure what my financial history is like. So you, when you have a high base, high, high cash base system, lack of data sources, it's very difficult to build a profile around an individual. So it will take time. It's actually happening very rapidly. So when you look at sort of the level of digitization, the fact that there's a, a lot of digital banks up and down the place that are fundamentally, uh, you know, giving out loans or people are able to access bank without branches and things. These, these are also, these are very fundamental to financial inclusion. So I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a slow, it's, I won't call it a slow pace. I think for where we are, it could be faster, but it's, it's also the, one of the fastest growing uh, adoption rates you find. So I think it's a, it's a natural process to get there. What's most important at this point in time is ensuring that we have the right infrastructure and the data that we have today is being collected right and also what you have today, utilize it well. Because if people that are in the system can actually get affordable credits, that is the incentive to drive others to come into the system. You know, and that leads me to the last point, which is basically what incentives are you providing to people to come into the system beyond holding on to their cash? So, so I think if you look at the policy document that has been shared and has been widely circulated, there's a part that I think is very critical. I'm a big believer that whatever needs to happen, if we don't solve the, fun, if we don't solve the problem of affordable credit, we're not going anywhere. Um, the government has been very clear in stating that consumer credit is a big part of the driver for the economic growth. They focus basically on high cost, uh, high value segments, so looking at mortgage as a part, and also auto finance as another part. I think for me, if I look at a four-year cycle, if I look at as what are the things that the government can do to impact, from my experience, honestly, focus on that. I think all the elements are in place. You have... Uh, uh, you know, sort of the OEMs, you have the manufacturing sector in place, you have the car dealerships in place, you have the maintenance segments. In place. Everything is ready. If the credit comes in, let's focus on credit and let's focus on ensuring that credit is affordable and we will see the impact. So I think the policy is in place now. It's all about the political willingness to get it to the line and actually ensure that the implementation is done in such a way where it gets into the right hands. Um, I think the first thing is just the vast amount of talent that we have across and the fact that there's such uh, an abundance in terms of culture that we don't appreciate. I think that there's a lot of development that is happening that is unnoticed. Um, when we talk about the Africa Free, uh, Continental Free Trade Act, there's a need for it because there's a lot of economic activity happening around a lot of countries and we are not typically trading amongst ourselves. I feel that um, every country, you see the, the development, you see the growth, across countries, but it's not inclusive and it's not bringing um, other African countries to be part and parcel. However, people from outside of Africa are participating. So uh, my, my lessons are that there's opportunity across the, con across the continent, massive, massive opportunities across the continent. A lot of things are overlooked in terms of maybe people focusing on the problems, but what I see is a lot of opportunity and a lot of uh, uh, people that are willing to do business. Um, finally, I believe that you know we have such an amazing level of diversity across the continent, so many different cultures, so many different uh, practices. And you know, you, people have perceptions and people always have these views. They project about different countries and behavior. 
But all I have genuinely seen, honestly, are very welcoming people that just want to do business and get, and, and get, get their people to have jobs. So people are willing to do business. So that's, that's been my biggest lesson. The CEO Forum has been a fantastic experience for me. Um, I mean, I'd like to thank Business Day for, you know, really, one, being consistent in, in ensuring this is delivered year on year. Um, I think also very critical as well is just a high quality of, of discussion. So I think, first of all, for me, has just been the depth and the quality of discussions, the people in the room. I mean, I think to get that uh, quality of people, uh, that high level, uh, you know, the high kind of discussions, you know, you really can make decisions, you really can swing change, and it's very commendable to be able to get these people in the room for the kind of conversations. Um, and so for me, I think the learning has been the, has been the most, uh, most valuable piece for me. And of course, the second is uh, there have been a lot of business opportunities as well that have sprung up. So I'm uh, very excited, uh, looking forward to the next one.